Gosh, it is warm in here. I've still got a ton of potatoes to get planted out and I'm waiting for a delivery of compost before I can get these in the ground. I've got half to go in the ground and a half to go in bags um, and I'm hoping to be able to get these planted next week. I'm having to have a bit of a reshuffle of all of my seedlings because the polytunnel is getting pretty full now and I have got two more greenhouses just over here that are housing currently my brassicas um, because the greenhouses have got a few panels missing so it's a little bit cooler in there than the polytunnel. So they are just, uh, my brassicas are in there keeping safe away from slugs at the moment um, and as soon as they're big enough they're going to get planted out hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, in here I've got a bunch of seedlings. I've got loads and loads of flowers. I've got dahlias, chamomile, yarrow, gypsophilia, calendula, snapdragons, sea lavender. I've got all sorts in here and they all kind of need a little bit of a reshuffle because not all of them need to be in the warm polytunnel now. Um, I've got some seeds that I've just sown and they need to come in here because they need a little bit more warmth to get going. So let's have a little walk around the polytunnel and I'll show you what's growing. So first up, can we just appreciate how beautiful all of these tulips are? They've all come into bloom now along here in these pots and I just think they look so pretty. Got some more around here too. These are my two greenhouses. I've got my cabbages and my cauliflowers in here. I've got my kohlrabi and my kale over in this one. And yeah, it's all looking pretty lovely at the minute. It's just started spitting. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it's just started raining ever so slightly. It's really, really refreshing. It's been super warm today and it's actually the first day I've been in a t-shirt. My skin is getting some vitamin D and it feels lovely. It's really warm today. So nice to have the sun on my face. Anyway, let's have a look at the polytunnel. It's looking pretty chuck-a-block in here. I've got a little bit of foot space. <laughs> but yeah, there's lots going on in here. Let's have a look. So as you can see, it's getting pretty full in here. And everything's looking pretty lush. Although yesterday, I spent two hours in the evening picking, hand-picking aphids off of each and every single one of my tomato plants. I've got about 50 tomato plants in here and about 10 or 15 dahlias and they got to each and every single one of them. I can still see a few little guys hanging out in the leaf crevices there. Can you spot them? I'm going to crush them now. So I obviously don't use any chemicals in my garden. Um, natural methods only. When these are outside, the the birds and the insects would usually take care of these little aphids here. Um, but they're in my polytunnel, so it's not got the best ladybird population in here. <laughs> um, aphids are one of the preferred diets of the ladybird. And uh, they do a really, really great job of sorting them out for you but um, yeah like I say they're in the polytunnel at the moment keeping them a little bit warmer so the natural predators aren't able um, to get in here so at the minute I'm just going around and crushing all of the little aphids there's a little bit of damage here that I thought initially there was slugs actually there is some slug trail there so <laughs> it's probably a mixture of both other than the aphid attack the tomatoes are actually looking pretty healthy they are a little bit slow to be honest um, we have had a pretty cold start to the spring but now the weather's starting to heat up they are shooting up a little bit more and getting a little bit stockier got lots and lots of different varieties of tomatoes probably about 30 different varieties I'd say a mixture of beef steak cherry tomatoes and salad tomatoes I like to have a mix of each and I've gone for quite um, a few interesting varieties this year. I've got quite a few different heirloom varieties. Um, let's have a little look. So I've got green Berkeley tie-dye, pink Berkeley tie-dye. I've got a lucky tiger at the back there, a mushroom basket. Down here we've got uh, a cosmos, which is a really beautiful kind of dark, dark purpley black kind of tomato that's full of anthocyanins. 
it gives a really really beautiful deep color to it and it's got kind of speckled markings that look a little bit like um a galaxy like star speckles on a galaxy which i guess is why it's called cosmos um i've also got saint pierre this makes a really really good sauce i'm gonna try and get rid of some of these aphids when and where i see them as well it's a little white a couple of white ones there Lucky Tiger, these are kind of an egg-shaped, really, really beautifully shimmery sort of tomato. I'm looking forward to growing those. Um, some of them haven't gotten very big at all. I'm not sure how you pronounce that one, but that's a really, really cool tomato. You can break it off into little chunks, it looks kind of gnarly. It's pretty cool. Um, mushroom basket, that's a big beef steak. Uh, yeah, lots of, lots of different heirloom varieties in here and we're really looking forward to having beautiful baskets of tomatoes because last year's drought kind of halted that dream <laughs> so i'm hoping that i actually get a chance to see what lots of these varieties look like i've got so many sweet peas that need to get out tons and tons of them more at the back there i've been pinching these out and they've um, really started side shooting so that's really good they're looking pretty strong and healthy now i just need to decide on a spot for these i'm thinking maybe either along my bathtub up the trellis because it'd just be really nice and scented or maybe at the back behind my ramp as well for the same reasons so as we're skating past it kind of smells really nice um other flowers include some cosmos that all need pinching out now and for the first of march they're not very big at all so yeah, i'm going to pinch these out and see if they bush up a little bit um, I potted them up not too long ago, so I'm hoping the bigger space kind of encourages them to get a little bit bigger. Behind that, I've got lots of zinnias. I absolutely love zinnias. I sow these in modules as well as direct sowing, and I'll be direct sowing a few of these later on. But I've got quite a few potted up that are doing nicely now. So we come to lots of my medicinal flowers. So I've got loads and loads of calendula, lots of chamomile. So much chamomile all at the back there too. Um, some chamomile down there and yarrow. This one's actually called Achillea Cloth of Gold and it's got beautiful, vibrant yellow flowers. Here we've got some flat leaf parsley. Got quite a few herbs that all still need potting up but I did manage to get a good couple of trays of flat leaf parsley in. Some more dahlias potted up back here, some more slug damage, but um, I think these will be okay. I'm going to actually pinch these out now. I don't know if I'm going to bother pinching that one out because it's already side shooting quite well. What have I just dropped? I just dropped loads of zinnia seed <laughs> seeds down there, so I hope I managed to scoop some up. These are a beautiful white, white colour, as the name would suggest, polar bear. Um, what have we got down here? Loads of celery. Gosh, I plant it. Every year I do this. I just really kind of heavily sow my celery seeds because they're so tiny um, and I'm a bit heavy handed with my seed sowing. So I always end up with a cluster. But I can't throw seedlings away like, when they look healthy. I just like, I just, they're potential little plants of food. So I just end up potting them all up and then, yeah, I've ended up with probably about 60 odd celery plants that I need to <laughs> try and offload to some people. Along here, we've got some snapdragons. I absolutely love snapdragons. They smell beautiful and they're actually edible as well, snapdragons. They come back every year and they just provide colour until the, until the first frost. So they're a really good one, snapdragons. Loads more cosmos along here. So down here, gosh, this is a really sorry looking little um, gathering of seed pots here. These have been annihilated by, I'm guessing, aphids because I can see some little white flies down there. Um, these were my peppers. They took quite a long time to germinate. There's a little fly there. Oh, look, you can see the aphids on them there, look. And they were pretty small, fairly weak plants anyway, so you can see that the aphids have proper taken advantage here. Um... So yeah, I'm not really holding my breath for a great chilli or pepper harvest this year. They took quite a long time to germinate and then they just um, didn't grow. They just didn't grow very big. That's as big as they got. I think my biggest pepper is this little guy here, which was the first one I potted up. 
the Mad Hatter pepper. And I sowed these on the 21st of February. So I really don't know why they've not grown. Maybe it's shitty compost. The compost that I actually potted these up into, I found in the shed of a new house where we moved in. Um, and it was just a like regular store-bought compost. And I just don't think it's very good compost because none of the seedlings that have been potted up into it have really done anything. They're just still pretty tiny and I'm, I'd expect them to be a lot bigger by now. Look at that aubergine. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. So I've never actually gotten to eat in one of my homegrown aubergines. I've grown them a few times and every time they've gotten to ripen, um, they've been stolen by rats or squirrels. So yeah, I don't seem to have much luck with them, but keep trying, we will. So I'm getting a bit stuck now. I'm gonna have to make myself a little bit of room to step in and show you what's down here. So there's a few radicchios and endives and greens in this little tray here. Over here are loads of obracia, or brecia, or brecia? I don't know how you pronounce it. This is rockcress. So you can use this to just cover up spaces. It's a really good cover crop and it grows pretty much anywhere. It loves rockeries growing through bricks and walls and things like that. Um, again, more abrisha in here. I also call this rockcress and it's edible as well. Then as we come up here, I've got some penstemons, a few little plants. I love growing store flowers because they're great for using decorations. The flowers dry to really, really nice kind of crispy paper. Well, they're actually already, they already have like a papery feel when they're growing, but they dry really beautifully. And they're just, yeah, great use for decoration. Here, we're starting out with all of my squash varieties. I've got so, so many squash. So this is just a great storage crop. It lasts pretty much until the next year, some of the varieties. So I love to grow lots and lots of different squash. And it's a really good bulk meal for my retreats that I run as well. So lots of the food, well, most of the food that is used in my retreats is either homegrown or foraged. So I love to grow squash because it's just a really, really good productive plant that can feed a lot of people so yeah i've got a mashed potato squash which has a consistency of mashed potato inside it's really interesting um i've got a chicky curry which is a climbing squash and they have beautiful small kind of bright orange fruits uh, that's great to grow up trellises and things like that then i've got some of my larger squash like my delicata that is a honey boat squash i've got a jumbo pink banana lots of courgettes as well um, yellow courgettes, black courgettes, got some patty pans as well, lots of different types of patty pans, custard white, sunburst yellow, some cucumbers down there, um, some sweet peas, more sweet peas. These are the gypsophilia that I have potted on yesterday and as you can see I've tried to kind of pinch them out to make them bush up a little bit but they are quite tall and leggy, they should be a lot bushier than this. But yeah, this is what it's looking like in the polytunnel at the minute. It's pretty chock-a-block. I'm gonna need to plant out quite a lot of things soon. Um, I think I'm gonna start probably with these sweet peas. Oh, and then the tomatoes are gonna get moved into, a bunch of them are gonna be moved into the greenhouse just out here. This one, because I've got a bed that's already kind of pre-made in there. I think I might pop a couple in pots in here and then this polytunnel is where the bulk of them are gonna be and I've got big kind of fabric bags and a self-watering system which you can kind of see there they all need setting up and then that's going to run through to a water butt just outside of my polytunnel let me show you so yeah the, the the water system will be fed through this little water butt and um, that will just help me out come summertime I won't have to be down here as much because I go away quite a lot on my skate trips and stuff so yeah, that is the polytunnel at the minute. And I've got quite a lot of seedlings still in the greenhouses as well. So I'll just go and show you the first one here. So this is all my cardboard that I've been collecting for my no dig bed that I need to make just in front of my bathtub over there. So um, as soon as that compost gets delivered, this is all going to be laid down and I'm going to create a couple more beds over there. But we'll come through to the greenhouse. It is a bit of a mess in here. There's loads of pots and stuff that I need to sort out. My tent. <laughs> but yeah, there's quite a few brassicas along here. 
Um, what have we got? We've got some kale, dwarf curly kale. We've got some turnips in here, more turnips. Um, lots of radicchio all potted up there and some onions that I need to decide on the space for. Um, yeah, I don't have much rock with onions. Last year I got onion white rot and the year, all the years before that I've got leaf miner. But I keep trying them every year because I'd love a really good onion harvest. Some beetroots. These multi-sown beetroots are probably ready to go out in the next week. Again, I think I'm going to wait for that compost and just do a little top up of all of my beds. Um, some rhubarb chard. I didn't know I had this. I just sowed more yesterday. I should really check. Um, over here. Hello. Over here I've got cabbages. Cabbages, cabbages, cabbages. Golden acre, primo and all year round. Looks like there's a little stray chamomile in there. So yeah, there's quite a bit in here. Gosh, look at that view out here. Let me zoom out. It's beautiful, isn't it? God, my stomach's rumbling. I'm going to need to make some lunch soon. Oh, there's some clematis here. I need to find spots for these. Probably up the back fence now that I've got a new fence. I'll show you that properly in my next tour video next week. But, um... Yeah, these are going to look nice all climbing up that, I think. Current temperature in here is 21 degrees. Not that warm. It feels a lot warmer. But how beautiful do all of these spring flowers look? The columbine, the cow parsley, the wiegler. I don't know how to pronounce that. Wiegler? I have just very, very recently sown some more seeds that are keeping safe in here and I'm keeping them in the top layer this time. If you saw my previous tour video you'll know that I lost quite a lot of seedlings because I put them in the bottom shelf and they got eaten by mice. So these ones I will keep in safe at the minute. I've got some more beetroot, some French beans, some squash here, some climbing beans, some bolotti beans and um, some more random squash and some cucumber. Oh, and I also re some more melons as well. Um, I don't know if it's a bit too late. I'm hoping that if I just keep them really, really warm and in good condition, they, they might be okay for the ship, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. We'll just go into the next greenhouse and see the last little batch of seeds that I've got in here. So again, all of these onions really desperately, desperately need planting out now. Um... Yeah, I just need to decide where they're going. Quite a few of those. And some shallots. Oh, are these shallots? These are shallots, actually. These are shallots and onions are in the other, the other greenhouse. A few little Brussels sprouts. And then over here, the last of the brassicas. So I've got loads more cabbages, loads more kale, and some cauliflowers as well. Um, I've just realised that I haven't got any broccoli. So I think I need to find some broccoli seeds because it is going to be too late to sow those soon. So that is how all of the seedlings are looking at the minute and yeah they're doing all right. I'm going to let them get a lot bigger before I plant them out into the garden um, because they're a little bit vulnerable when they're still this size. Slugs and birds will yeah happily pull these out of the ground or feast on them so I'm going to let them get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger and then the next few weeks I'm going to get them planted out into the garden. Right, let's make some lunch.
the wind started to pick up a little bit now but I'm going to spend the rest of the evening doing a little bit of direct seed sowing so in this bed just next to my polytunnel I've got lots of broad beans and potatoes growing and I've got a little pack of broad beans here that I'm going to direct sow and just chuck straight in the ground because um, I'd really like a late harvest of broad beans and if I get these in now I should be good for um, a late harvest. So these are the beans that I've got, they are crimson flowered broad beans so they've got this pretty pinkish red flowers on them and I really really love broad beans flowers, they actually smell absolutely delicious, they have a scent almost similar to sweet peas, um, they're really really beautiful anyway so stick your nose in your broad beans next time you get a chance. For these I'm just going to be direct sowing them into this bed here with these potatoes. I've already got these ones that have come up. I planted these out maybe a few weeks ago now. They've started flowering now. They're still quite small but I expect with the warm weather that we've got over the next couple of weeks that they'll really start shooting up. Um, but there are a couple of gaps along the edges of the potato bed here so that's where I'm going to pop these seeds in. My little robin friends just come to join us. Him and his little wifey are nesting now. I'm only really seeing them one at a time. Um, but there's been many mealworms being flown back and forth to the nest. This is the boy robin here. I'm just going to give this a quick hoe before I get these seeds planted. Just so some of these little weedlings here don't get established. So you can see my potatoes are already starting to pop up here. So I just need to be careful of any new shoots. I think that's a poppy there, I'll leave that one. And get rid of some of these. Wood Avens. Right, so I'm just going to make a few little holes with my dibber down the side of here and pop the beans in. I'm not being precise with this spacing, but probably just under a foot per plant between between each plant. Did I just put a bean in there? I can't remember. Put another one in just to make sure. I'll put one in between there. For a skateboarder, I haven't got very good balance. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. And I should get some late flowering broad beans. So next up, I'm going to be sowing some flowers, direct sowing some flowers. And I've got a bunch here that I'm going to sow, I think, some in the bed behind my bathtub, uh, some in my mum's remembrance bed and others just kind of dotted um, along the borders of vegetable beds as well. So in that bed behind my bathtub as well as the scented flowers I also want a little bit of colour so I've got a mixture of zinnias, poppies and blue cornflowers as well so I'm going to make a little mixture and direct sow those. <laughs> the robin just landed on top of the camera. You okay? I forgot my mealworms today, I left them at home. It's the first time I've ever forgot my mealworms and it's just been pestering me all day. Hello. I haven't got anything. Hi. I'm just watching my robin bob up and down there. He's got some flies in his mouth. I think the new nest is just behind the plot at the back because I keep seeing him go back and forth. <laughs> He's clearing up my crumbs from my sandwich. 
it's been getting a lot warmer here in Sheffield and it's a perfect time to get direct sowing some seeds because the soil is just starting to warm up. And I've got some cornflowers, some poppies, some zinnias and I'm going to make a little mix in the bed behind my bathtub. And I've got some night scented stock to go back there as well because I want to make that area really nice and scented. I've got some jasmine and some honeysuckle growing up through the bushes there. So yeah, that's the first point of call. Um, and then I'm going to be sowing some poppies, some California poppies, really bright cherry ones just to attract the pollinators all along the beds to my broad beans, my brassicas, my onions. And I've also got some blue corn flowers and some purple candy tuft to sow in my mum's remembrance bed. So that's kind of like a blue theme because that's her favourite colour. So now that the spring flowers like the bluebells um, and the cilia and the hyacinths are all starting to die back the aqualegia is in bloom at the moment um, but then i'm going to want some color for later on in the year so that's where the cornflowers and the candy tuft come in so i've got my seeds here and i've also got a couple of little tubs because when i'm direct sowing my seeds i find them much easier to just make the little mix straight in the tub with some compost um, rather than preparing the soil and raking it over and making sure that's a really really nice crumbly condition for the seeds I just find it much easier to kind of mix them all up in here and just sort of patch so little handfuls of compost here and there so today I'm going to be doing a little mix for the bed behind my bathtub I'm going to be doing that with poppies, zinnias and cornflowers and that's just going to make it nice and cheery and the front I'm going to be direct sowing in kind of little curves the night scented stock as well I've got a little patch of compost there and these ones are my cornflowers so I'm going to save about two thirds of these for my mum's bed over there and the rest I'll just pop in this little seed mix so I've got some cornflowers in there and I'm going to add in some California poppies and then I was given some of these zinnia seeds so I'm going to be sowing some of those as well. These are a uh, mixed variety so it looks like there's lots of pinks and oranges which go nice with the kind of yellowy orange poppies. So I'll pop those in there and they'll be nice for some cutting flowers as well. I'm going to mix all of this up. And we're going to it. I did plant lots of spring bulbs in here, but the rats and the squirrels ate them all, so there isn't much growing. I've planted up recently a few evening primroses, and there are a couple stray tulips in here as well. So I'm just going to give this a go over with the hoe, and then we can get direct seed sowing. Oh, oh, I might as well take this one home. <laughs> Uh -huh, that's a nice little one. So I'm just going to be sowing little kind of swaths of it, all the mixture. Probably in these little two little patches along here. And then I just top that up with a little bit of compost and give it a good water. So next up is my mum's bed. This is her border. I've been growing it for coming up to five years now. She passed away in 2018 and uh, lots of the plants were brought up from her garden in Kent. The cleavers there. Yeah, so I've got some hellebores over here, some iris as well, and some of the white bluebells that I took from her garden. So yeah, I really, really love this little patch here. And like I said, it's a blue theme. Got lots of forget-me-nots here, um, some blue aquilegia, some alliums about to pop open. And I think this lupin's purple too. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure that I extend the season of colour of blue colour so I'm going to be sowing some purple candy tuft and some blue cornflowers as well um, if I can fit them in so I need to <laughs> clear some patches. Um, I might have to say goodbye to a couple of those little tops and dandelions down there but it's for good cause. <laughs> Big old creeping buttercup there. Oh, <laughs> heading down there. 
actually forgot about this um, Buddha in here. <laughs> That's from my mum's living room as well. Put him somewhere better. So that's that's better. There's a bit more uh, space and light getting to this little bit now. So what I'm going to do, same sort of thing, fill up this tub and then I'm going to mix up the cornflowers and the candy. Actually, I think I'm just going to do them both separately um, and do little patches of each um, just because they are different heights. I'm just going to tip all the cornflowers in there, give it a really, really good mix. I've already disturbed the soil down here so it's quite damp so I'm not going to water that first um, but if it was quite a dry day I'd water the soil first before putting this little seed mix down. So I'm just going to do a little patch there, a little patch down there and then I'll save this little bit for a patch over there. Um, and then I've got some candy tuft here. So, same thing. I've just noticed some of the succulent down here that I didn't know I had. And I also just noticed all of these <laughs> cleavers on my back. I'm not called Sticky Willy for no reason. Um, my microphone stopped working a couple of minutes ago, so I think I'm going to call it a day.